What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Sherdog.com. My name is Sean Sheehan, and today I'm back with my top five bets for the weekend in the world of mixed martial arts, and I'm fully invested in the UFC this weekend in terms of the bets. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not so sure maybe in terms of the card. It's not the greatest card in the world. We Obviously, we know UFC last week. We had uh, some great MMA, which I'll get into in a second, but um, there are... Uh, there are a lot of these kind of run-of-the-mill UFC cards these days, and uh, uh, usually there is another event with them, and usually I, I pick out one or two uh, from these cards. But this week I've, I've got, and I've watched a good bit of tape uh, on some of these fights. I knew some of the people, obviously, already, but um, I think I've gotten I've, I think I've gotten five good bets here, famous last words, but um, we, will, uh, we will have a look and we will have a discussion about it. Maybe I'll give you some ideas of what to back and maybe what not to back as well. Which is uh, <laughs> which is sometimes <laughs> half the debate as well. Um, before we get to that, though, last week um, I had bets from you from PFL and um, uh, one bet from Octagon, and it went pretty well. Uh, the flyer didn't hit, but that was the Pedro Carvalho Brendan Lochnan fight, uh, which I think everyone agrees is it was an early stoppage. Now Brendan was looked like he was on his way to run, as I said last week, uh, on his way to win. Even as I, and as I said last week, I wasn't massively confident in this um but there wasn't there wasn't much to pick from in terms of the uh the wide bets last week um but um yeah it was a it was a quick start from brendan and i thought a quick start from bedroom might be the way but it didn't happen but aside from that four out of four on our uh, normal regular bets i'm absolutely delighted with that uh will flurry got a win over doctor i actually haven't been able to check out that that fight yet i uh i, I was looking for the replay and I, <laughs> the, the zone website Oh my god! I managed to find the PFL uh, um, <laughs> replays on it, but God Almighty, it's they make it so hard to find their uh, their old events. It's absolutely ridiculous. But anyway, Will Flory won there. Goyota Yamauchi won at minus two two five. Will Flory was minus two hundred plus one thirty. Kai Kamaka. I have an interview out with him today. I spoke about it as well. Great price. I said that last week. I think that was probably the standout bet. And Adam Barrocks is on minus one thirty eight. That was a closer one. Um, but um, he he got the win as well over Enrique Barzola. It was funny. I was a uh, I was away last weekend for a couple of days, and I was uh, following along with the the Sherdog Twitter and my guy Ian O'Neill's Twitter as well as they were uh, updating the, the fights. And I was just getting winner after winner after. I was like, I I I, I need to not watch the fights more. It's I better look uh, being being away and, and not seeing them. So uh, I think that's the. Uh, that's the way to go in, in future, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go to bed early more and and, and uh, watch the fights the next part. I think uh, I think I have more luck, but um, let's 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 not look at it that way. Let's have some luck going into this week <coughs> because I I like I like uh, do you know what I like a few of these fights. I like a few of the prospects. There are three or four very good prospects on this card. I think which. Um, in years to come, we might look back at these fights. They might be important fights. They might be important in terms of um, we betting them for that reason. It worked out. We better them for that reason. It didn't work out, and maybe um, you know they get into bigger fights, championship fights, and we uh, we have maybe a bigger understanding of uh, of why that is. But um, at the same time, there's money to be won today, our our Saturday night, and we'll uh, we'll try to do that too. So let's start off with this. And uh, the, the, my, my first bet of the week, uh, actually, before I get to that, overall, uh, 28 to 50, uh, 57, almost 50%, so just one away from uh, from 50% there, and only two flyers this year, only two flyers out of 15, very bad, but that's the record, so uh, I, I always say I am for 50%, it's been clawed back a bit, so I'm happy enough with that. Right, bet number one, uh, I'm going with Karina Silva. Uh, to beat Ariana Lipsky and her price is minus one four eight best price. Now, I I have an awful habit of picking Ariana Lipsky fights wrong, and I usually um I usually like to bet on Ar- Ariana Lipsky. I really really um rate her highly. I think she's a very good fighter. I think she came over from KSW and she had a little bit of maybe maybe a bit too much expectancy I think she thought she was just going to go in and do in the UFC what she did in KSW and we all know things don't work out that way you know so she had to take her licks she had to take her losses you know she lost a few fights um uh early doors and then she lost another couple but she's worked her way back every time 
and she's on a three five win streak now and uh, looking good. Um, with that said, though, I think it's very hard to uh, very hard to look at her in this fight and say, you know, this is the one to go for. Um, I think you look at Karina Silva and you look at what she's done and you look at what she produces in her fights, and I'm thinking. She might be on a slightly different level to, to Lipsky at this stage of her career. She's 30 now as well. You know, 21 fights into her career, taking her, her few losses. Uh, but outside of the UFC, you know, and fought some good competition outside of the UFC as well. And it feels just like it's her time now. And there's there's two big reasons why I, I like her in this fight. <coughs> One, we have seen the best of Lipsky in the UFC now, right? And I feel like Silva could beat that fighter, right? Having gone back and watched Silva... Now, I, I, I've obviously seen all of Silva's fights in the UFC, but I I haven't paid massive attention to her until maybe the last fight, the, the Marina Moroz fight. Obviously, that was her third fight in the UFC, and when you fight Patelio, you know, who's not obviously not great, and she got a good win there, but she's got three good wins, I suppose, but... Going back and watching those fights, she's very impressive. And you look at Lipsky's fights, and been very impressive as well. You know, beating Casey O'Neill, she's beat a, she's beat a higher caliber fighter, no doubt about it. But I think the best she produced can be beaten by what Silva can produce. Now, I, the reason I say that, maybe that's an odd thing to say, because if she hadn't produced that, and she was still to produce it, maybe I would be expecting more, and I'd be expecting an improvement from her last few fights, and maybe that would be enough. Now, I, again, I am expecting improvements. I'm expecting her to fight well, but I don't think it'll be enough against uh, Karina Silva. Um, the thing about Lipsky is, right, she, look, she has, she's a good few finishes, 10 finishes in her career, seven decision wins, four decision losses, so 11 of her uh, 25 fights have gone to a decision. Silva, at the other side of it, in only one decision in her 21 fights, and that was a loss. 17 wins, 17 finishes. Um, been finished three times herself as well. But that tells you all you need to know about her. She's a finisher. She hits really hard. I love her little duck unders for uh, for takedowns as well. What what fight? I think was it was it the Patelio fight? It was. Uh, you know, she's three submission wins in her career in the UFC so far, and her Dana White contender series fight also a submission win. But the way she hits, you know, so I I think I described her uh, before one of her recent fights as like. She can hit, we've seen it from Verdum, we've seen it from Charles Oliveira, people who are really good on the ground, who kind of know they're really good on the ground, and now she's, of, I'm not saying she's of that level, but my point is, they can hit with more free will on the feet, because they know they can back it up on the ground, if you get me. And I think, I think I'd put her into that bracket as well, but as, like it's, it's funny, I like, a, a lot of time I like to look at these fights, say, with the commentary off or with a, without a lot of the knowledge, right? And think to myself, is this person a striker? Is this person a jiu-jitsu artist? Is this person very well-rounded? <laughs> a lot of the time, you know. <coughs> right? If you're watching Verdum, you're watching Oliveira, maybe, and others. You know, you can maybe... Oliveira's probably a bad example, but Verdum. You, you know this guy. When it gets to the ground, okay, he didn't look bad in the feet, but God almighty, this guy is exceptional on the ground um I, I think with Silva she's good in both she is very good in both and I think as I said one helps the other but I can't get away from even though I look at her last four fights and I see four submission wins in a row and I see there was one by arm injury and then two more submission wins in a row before that I still can't help but look at her striking god Jesus she hits so hard she knocks people down she stuns them she gets them thinking she makes them fear her striking and then to have the ground game behind it absolutely exceptional um Lipsky look she can hit hard but she doesn't I don't think she has that she's not you know she's not bad on the ground at all um offensively but she doesn't have that killer nature that Silva does and uh I think that that, that is the win and lose in this fight. I think Silva is a slightly better athlete as well, uh, although Lipsky is very good, and that's, I think, kind of what makes her the great fighter. But 
I uh, I think Silva, and I think Silva probably inside the distance. So I like that bet. I like that price. Silva minus one four eight in uh, in that fight is my opening bet of the week. Right, the next one I'm going for is Euros Medic against Tim Means, and uh, the bet I'm going for there is Medic to win by Tiki Okeo. Uh, it's around even money. Minus one oh five is the the best price. I saw that there now. It's an interesting one because I was looking at this and I saw, look, you're, you've Tim Means and he's uh, plus 250 um, against a relatively new guy to MMA who is, you know, a, a, around minus 310, minus 320, minus 335 actually, I see him here, on one place. Only 11 fights into his career, you know, the Dirty Bird is nearly 50 fights. And you're thinking to yourself, can you know can this one be a flyer can this one be something we haven't seen before can this one be um i bet maybe where we make a little bit of money and then i went and i i watched a bit of both of them and i watched a bit of medic especially you know i know i obviously know what it means but watching medic okay he, he lost his last fight he got neck crank in the, in the second round and you know he lost to jalen turner as well but look there's no shame in that but um medic just looked he looked the youthful uh he's 10 years younger but he's 30 as well it's 30 versus 40 here so he's not the youngest in the world but he looked the youthful fast heartful guy he looks like you know if you put the two of them together you watch a, a couple of recent fights he looks like he's gonna hurt tim means now you know means it hasn't happened to him too much in his career he's only been knocked out twice as i said in 50 odd fights and uh you know, it hasn't happened recently. It hasn't happened since 2019 against Nico Price. And I think it was a long time before that as well. You know, and he beat Andre Filo last time out. Oh, I like, you know, I think is a... Uh, at one time, anyway, was a very good prospect for a, for a contendership in that division. It didn't work out for him, but alas. Um, I think it could be one of those fights where, you know, Tim Means loves to use his size, six foot two in that welterweight division. He's coming up against a guy who's... Uh, I think he's six foot one, but you know he's a he's a tall, he's a big tall six foot one. You know he's probably six foot one and three quarters type of thing. He's not going to have much of an advantage, I don't think. I don't think he's going to have a speed advantage, which I think Tim Means is probably underrated speed. But his his range, his length, his jab, his high kicks, Medic is very good at putting them together. Very good at kind of those kicks from the outside. Very good at coming in with those kind of. Um, close hooks inside especially he turns out to you know the, when he's fighting southpaw and he kind of turns into that left hook you know kind of mcgregor style against alda you know that one where you're you're meeting someone inside and it's funny i think a lot of the my funny it happens sometimes a lot of my bets today are uh are counter striker bets especially uh well well especially the main event i'll just throw it out there which we'll get to in a second but i think that's the case as well with Milic, and i think sometimes right a guy like tim means we, we've seen it down through the years in all different sports right a guy like tim means i think needs to change up his game a little bit to survive in modern day mma but at the same time look it's hard to tell a guy not to stick with with what brought him to the dance not to stick with with what makes him the best fighter but i think in this matchup if he fights his you know, good output, long jab, long kicks game, it's going to be an issue because it's, that's that underrated speed I talked about a minute ago, it's hardly going to still be there at 40 to beat a guy at 30 like Medic, who for the size and strength of him is very fast too. And very, maybe not very fast. If, you know, if you put him, you know, one of those, you know what, those machines where you have to touch on the lights, he might be the fastest in the world. But when he sees the shot, when he sees that, opening to land that counter as i said that little left hook inside or right hook whichever you prefer he's very good at it very good and you you don't need to watch much of his fights to see that um i was watching which fight was it uh maybe, maybe it was the smellsburger fight but the smellsburger fight was where he landed the spinning back fist and, and got it as well but i think it might have even been our, our, our lobby fight where he lost where he, he drops his opponent to the knee just because they, they had the audacity to kind of uh, 
uh, to kind of throw the wrong shot at the right time when he was ready to counter. Very good at that. Now, you know, not not the best fighter in the world at it or by any means, but is he good enough to be the 40-year-old Tim Means with it? I think so. And I think at that price as well, uh, to get the finish, to land the shot in Tim Means, uh, minus 105, I think that's uh, I think that's pretty good there. Uh, the next bet I'm going for, I'm not as sure on, but at minus 150 for Mike Figlak, I'm going for that bet. And I'm going for it for two reasons. Again, um, he's fighting Austin Hubbard, and I watched a bit of Austin Hubbard. And Austin, so I, I, I told you I'm picking counterfighters here. Austin Hubbard is the one counterfighter I'm not picking. Um, I, and, and speed, I talked a lot about speed there a second ago. I don't think he has the speed. I don't think he's as good technically as Michael Figlak. And those are the two reasons for the pick here. Um, uh, for the pick against Hubbard, the other... <laughs> well, I suppose there's the conflicting positive and negative reason for Figlak. <coughs> I know how good he is. And I know how poorly he performed in the last fight. And I know he's been out for a year and a half. Um, so we need to... Put all of those three things together and see where he can get to. Now, you give me what I know about my Figlak at minus 150 against the guy, the quality of, the, of Austin Hubbard, and it takes a lot for me not to pick him, all right? A year and a half out and all of that, and lo- lost his last fight. That is, that is a good bit, but it's not enough. It's not enough. I still believe that um, Figlak is a very good fighter. Like, his last win was against Aggie Sardari. You know, for Cage Warriors title, Cage Warriors champion, Aggie Sardari. Or it wasn't for, it wasn't for, I don't think it was for the title, but the former champion, Aggie, Aggie Sardari, who is a really good technical fighter, a lot better of a technical fighter than Austin Hubbard, a lot trickier, I think, of a fighter than Austin Hubbard, and maybe, maybe he doesn't hit as hard necessarily as Hubbard, but I think he gives a lot more looks, and Figlak dominated that fight and won it very, very well. You know, he's beaten the likes of Kieran Lister, Steve McIntosh, Oban Elliott, who we've seen in, in the UFC now. He finished Oban Elliott, now Oban was down at lightweight there, and he's looked a lot better since he's gone up to uh, middleweight and, and welterweight, obviously. Um, but Figlak is a very good technical fighter. He trains with his, you know, his brother as well, who's a very good fighter. And both of them, both of, both of these guys were, you know, three years ago, they were looked at as... The, Top two guys coming through, and they both have setbacks in that time. You know, Mateo's still working his way back. You could see him maybe fighting James Sheehan for the uh, for the welterweight title in Cage Warriors in, in 2024, maybe 2025. Um, and we'll see what Mika, uh, Mike looks like here. But I think if he puts a display on, like he put against Aggie Sardari, I think he get the finish here. I think he's lightning quick hands. He's a better technical fighter than Austin Hubbard. He's faster. Uh, Hubbard's countering game, I don't think will work that well. I think um, uh, I think Figlak is a very good go-forward fighter, and he's well used to fighting lads who are trying to counter him. Um, I I just think it's I think it's made for him. I think it's a good matchup for him. You, a lot of the cage warriors fighters don't get good matchups. I don't think Faris Ziam was necessarily a good one in his opening one, but this is, and I do think he win. I think that's a price we could look back at and go, oh god, that's uh, minus one fifty. It probably should have been minus three fifty. Um, but it all depends on how Figlak looks after coming back after a couple of years out. But I'm backing him to come back looking good, and I think the Aston Hubbard matchup is uh, is a very good one for him. Right, to the main event, and again, I'm going for, I like the last one, but like the first two, I'm going for the counterfighter here in Mateus Nicolau at minus uh, 180 in his fight uh, over uh, Alex Perez. Um, again, a very similar breakdown to all the other ones. I think the speed, the back foot fighting of Nicolau is just going to be a little bit too much for Perez. Um, you know, he his last three fights in a row has Perez, didn't look bad at all against Makayev, but a very dissimilar or unsimilar, not a similar fight to, to this one. You know, the Pantoja and Figueredo ones may be more similar, and, you know, he lost him even quicker, but got submitted in both of them. Um, watching Nicolo, I was very, very impressed. Obviously, he lost to Brandon Rival, and I think, look, speed at 125 is always going to be an issue, but that, that shot he landed on Schnell, you know, he, was it the, the very start of that fight where he knocked him down? Did really well, but then knocked him out with that beautiful shot late. 
uh, that speed that he lands with, the ability to counter, uh, is just really, really, really good. And I think for Alex Perez, it's going to be very hard not to get drawn in by him because what do you do? Because Nicolau is one of those fighters who is very, very much the outside um, will... If he needs to make it a boring fight, if he needs to uh, stay to the one game plan that causes zero interaction in the whole fight, he will do it. He will do it. And he will draw you in. He will force you to do it. And there's very few fighters who have the ability to not be drawn in. Uh, is Alex Perez one of them? I, I honestly don't think so. I think he will get drawn in. Um, I think he'll go for Nicolau. I think he'll see openings, because there are openings. But I think Nicolau's speed and his power are very, very, very good. Um, you know, he has 10 finishes and 19 wins and 9 decisions. And, you know, he's a, a draw as well in there. So not exactly lighting people up um, uh, all throughout his career. But he did, you know, he did light up Matt Schnell, unfortunately for Schnell. And he's lit up a few other people, but... This is the type of matchup, I think, where I, I'm not sure about the finish in this one, right? I'm not 100% sure, and I was looking at that for one of my bets of the week, but as a straight-up fight, I think he will win it. Now, the, the one reservation I would have here is you look at his record, right? He's never, obviously never gone past three rounds. This is his first five-round main event, um, and, I, I, you know, Perez has once back in, back in the day, so it's not like... So the point I'm making here, right, is I, I don't think he has a huge advantage over Perez in that uh, area. But I wonder, can he do it himself? Like, Perez looks like a guy who could fight at his pace for five rounds. I wonder, and now, no, if Nicolau draws him in, that's a different story, maybe not. But I don't know if Nicolau can fight at his... And it's not, it's not like he's going at a full knot, uh, full knot forward mad pace all the time it's a it's a bit different and it's we see this in mma a lot when pe people are fighting off their back foot on their bicycle it's actually tougher almost to keep that up than when you're in a rock'em sock'em robots fight sometimes um i want i that's the only question i have over this other than that i do think he'll draw him in i do think he'll land the counters do i think he can technically take him apart i'm not too sure but i think maybe tactically He'll draw him in, and that should be enough. Um, I'm going to talk myself out of it here a little bit, but watching tape, I was I was very, very impressed by Nicolau in certain ways. And I think, like, Nicolau is one of those guys, right? How many last did I say he, he have in his career? Three. He lost to Dustin Ortiz years ago, right? And he lost outside of the, uh, of the UFC. And he's only lost... To Brandon Rival, right? So he beat Manel Cape, beat Tim Elliott, Dvorak, Schnell, Lewis Smolka, and Moraga. He's only losing to the best of the best there, really. And like even Dustin Ortiz, a very, you know, that was first round, but Dustin Ortiz is quick and he was a good fighter and he's there. I, I think only the best guys will beat him because of his style. I think the only the best guys in the world are good enough to take apart a style like that. So is Alex Perez one of the best guys in the world? Um, no, he's not. Let's be honest here. He's not. He's he's one of the top 10, 15 best guys in the world. But is he one of the top four or five best guys in the world? No. So uh, I, I think that's where Nicolau is. Can Nicolau go to the next level and become the top two or three? We'll see. But I certainly think he's the top uh, He's the top five or six. And to, to beat him, you have to be one of the top um, three or four. So Nicolau is the pick in that one. Right. The... I'm the, Okay, the flyer of the week... I'm so intrigued by, by this mad fight between um, Bogdan Guskov and Ryan Spann. I think Ryan Spann has been picked more times by me incorrectly than any other fighter ever. I've picked him by knockout. I've picked him by submission. I've picked him to lose, win, and I get it wrong every single time nearly. I, I think I got one good big one right with him. But I, I went for the flyer here, right? Because of the uncertainty. You never know what a Ryan Spann fight, right? So, I there was one bet I was looking at, right? And I believe the price is wrong, so I'm not going for it. So, the un, the over-under in this is the over one and a half rounds. Uh, I'll tell you my bet in a second. <coughs> Plus 200, minus 275 for the under. 
and there was a bet up here if I had to finish in round one and it was like it was like plus 300 and I was like that price can't be right right so I've decided to pick someone and I'm going with Bogdan Guskov to win in round one by a knockout plus 425 so that's my flyer of the week here is my opinion on this someone is getting knocked out in round one I, I that's the bet I wanted to give you I just don't believe the price is right let me see if I can find it here uh it was like fight 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 ins in round one it's plus 370 it says here on, on best fight odds that can't be right right if that is the correct odds betting it <laughs> And that's if that's the correct odds, that's my flyer. Y'all heard it here. I'm changing it. And if that is actually the correct odds, but it it just can't be. It just can't be. Um, I think there's I think there's something wrong with with that, that odds. There's actually another one here, a similar one. It's plus one thirty. I think that's more correct, right? But anyway, I'm not giving that bet. I'm going for a Guskov to win in round one via knockout at uh, what price is it again? Plus four twenty five. So. These two lads, like I, I, I love a Ryan Span fight because he's a lot of submissions, he's a lot of knockouts in his record. He comes out and he lays it down, and he'll either get hit, hit you, knock you out, submit you. You know, in a Ryan Span fight, there's something mad happening. Let me just run through his last few fights, right? Okay, and we'll just we won't look at win or losses. We look at when it ended. So the last was the last fight was a split decision. We'll forget that one. Round one, round one, round one, round one, round one, round one. Okay, there was a round three split decision again. Then there's round two, round one, another decision. Round one, 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 one. You get the idea, right? A lot of his fights end in uh, in round one. Guskov, let's let's look at the rounds where his fights end. Round one, 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 one. Round three, it ended again. Round one, round two, one, one, two, one, one, two. One one, right? A lot of first round finishes there. Someone's just gonna, someone's just gonna rip me. Just going one one one, one. <laughs> as you should. Please, please do that. Um, I I think someone's getting put out here. I think Guskov was brought in too quickly. Obviously against uh, Odzimir. Odzimir, a better fighter, I think, than Span at times. Although, have they fought? They probably they probably have fought at some stage. Let's uh. Let's have a look here. Have Uzzamir and Span fought? Uh, they haven't. That's a fight that. Sh- that's oh, that's probably the next fight that's going to happen now. Um, someone, someone would get knocked out in that fight. I think someone's getting knocked out in this fight. I look at Guskov and think, right, he has only been knocked out once in his career. It was a. Uh, it, it wasn't that fight against uh, um, Uzzamir. He was submitted in that one. He got knocked out in twenty twenty. In uh, over an uh, AMC promotion, um, he hasn't had that many fights, right? But Span has been knocked out what three times in his career, uh, submitted three times as well. I just look, you look at the two of these guys, right? Span throws the big shots, but he goes for his big takedowns as well. He can absolutely do that. Ground upon good submissions. Guskov in that fight with Zach Ponga, he just every time he looked like he hit him, he was going to knock him out. He just has that real, real power touch. Um, I watched one of his other fights as well. I don't know where it was. It was on YouTube somewhere. And you, the cleanliness, again, the counter shots, the cleanliness of his counter shots are the antithesis of the cleanliness of <laughs> how he looks as a fighter. He doesn't look, and I'm, maybe I'm wrong, and absolutely people disagree with me here. He doesn't look like the most technically brilliant fighter in the world, but by God, is he effective. He can land those shots. Look, he does eat a shot as well. There's no doubt about it. He even had a couple from Ponga in the, the four minutes that that uh, lasted a little bit less. Uh, I just think one of these lads is going to land the better prices on Guskov. He's the younger guy. Maybe more of the, you know, more of the, the uh, brain intact, if you want to put it that way. More of the, the solidity to take a shot intact. And if two of them land, who's going to land the harder? I think Guskov hits really hard. And... It, it's one of those ones, that I'll say it again, it's it's kind of a, a one you don't see. You know, it's not necessarily you don't see the shot coming, although that there's a bit of that as well, but you don't think this is the one that's going to knock you out. And then he does. He's very good at that sum. Uh, that is the flyer of the week. Uh, other than that, there's not too much in this card, if I'm being honest. Uh, Onaman Pierce, I like that fight a lot. I'd probably go for the underdog in Onaman, that one. I, I have a soft spot for him. 
minus 145 I do like that uh, Lane and Denise uh, Lane is the underdog there I probably would go with uh, with that minus uh, 245 for Denise um, uh, Honey Yaya against uh, Victor Henry you know me when Honey Yaya is fighting I'm backing him to win by submission now that bet is not up there yet but Throw me in honey eye by submission. Whatever the price is, I'll get I'll, I'll throw a fiver on it. Uh look, Henry will be the favourite there, but I, I love a yeah by submission. Uh, Machado and Maze in the, the the big boys out there fighting. Um I, I'll go with Maze on that one. He's just about the favourite of pick him fight around minus one. Uh one fifteen he is. Uh minus one oh five. Best price plus one oh five actually for Maze, if you fancy that. Um Marnik Mann is the underdog, as she should be, I think, against Ketlin Souza. Watched her again. Who did she fight? She fought um She fought Karina Silva, didn't she, if I'm not mistaken? And you know, not not amazing, but um she's a big favourite here, and I think rightly so. Petrovic and Lang. Again, there's another one with a big favourite and Petrovic, and he probably win that at uh, or uh, uh she will probably win that even Ivana Petrovic at uh, at minus uh four seventy. Benitez, big fan of Benitez. He's the underdog here. <clears throat> Plus one seventy against Machete. So um we'll uh, we'll see how that one goes. Um yeah, those are the the prices for the UFC this weekend. I'll recap the six bet, five bets again even. Karina Silva at minus one four eight, even though it kind of kills me. So go against Lipsky, big fan of Lipsky. Medish by a knockout, minus one oh five plus minus one fifty for uh, McFiglack. Uh, minus 180 for Nikolaou and Guskov to get the knockout in round one. Plus 425 is the flyer of the week. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you really like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, it would really help. It'd be absolutely fantastic. Check out some of my other videos uh, from the Sheehan Show on uh, on Sherdog here uh, or on the YouTube page. It'd be absolutely fantastic. Please subscribe. Uh, please follow me on Twitter at Sean GMBA if you're not already. I'm always tweeting stupid stuff, so you'll be uh, absolutely delighted there and follow Sherdog as well on all uh, on all social medias. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'll be back next week with even more bets, but until then, I'll see ya. Good luck. <laughs>